New hidden gems, beast mode stuff. Let's talk about it. Here's some codes to save you some cash on your next Middle Eastern niche or designer fragrances. What's going on guys? My name is Neeb. Welcome back to Aromatics. Today we're going to be talking about new fragrances added to my collection. More so first impressions. I've worn these, but only once. So I don't think it's fair to make a full review on any of these yet. And you'll probably see these in my top gems of the week series that uploads every single week. Today specifically though, I wanted to talk about a couple of fragrances that I just picked up. And these are absolutely beast stuff. There's one that's not really beast mode stuff, but a couple of newbies and if not just hidden gems. So we're going to be talking about a couple fragrances from the house of Junaid and Junaid is a fragrance brand that I've grown up knowing my father's always grabbed some of their fragrances but I never really dove into the brand well we are now and we're diving head first we're gonna be talking about almost all of their fragrances so this is going to be marking of the beginning of jumping into Junaid fragrances so a lot of their fragrances are great some of which are beastly stuff and generally speaking you can find them for like a hundred dollars or less which is beautiful niche style fragrances that uh, last all day, some of them, not all of them, that smell different and they're very, very unique to the East. There is one that I've talked about a long time ago, it's called Wujud and it was like this, uh, I think it was rose and maybe this honeyed water vibe, beautiful fragrance that I no longer have because I gave it to my father. So today we're gonna be talking about Namir. We're also gonna be talking about Thuluj. And finally, we're gonna be talking about Thani, is I believe what it's called. But there's also a new release to Sphinx fragrances called uh, Cairo Nights. Might as well talk about that here today as well. So Cairo Nights and a few from this brand called Junaid. So the first one I want to start off with is going to be Namir. And Namir is absolutely beastly stuff, but it's a very specific style DNA. So what this smells like is a Middle Eastern freaking king. All right, it does have like this metallic vibe to it, but it's naturally done. I don't think that there's anything that's, you know, ambergris or ambroxan that's really creating that vibe, but rather a combination of some peppers and that patchouli. It's honestly, it smells like a very familiar Eastern style DNA. Think of like the whole Arabian Oud, uh, Arabian Night Silver, etc. But extremely intense. I mean, much more intense than that. So if you don't like Eastern fragrance or Middle Eastern, you might not like this one because it's very spicy, but I absolutely love it, man. This smells like my uncle, maybe just super masculine, hair on your chest and just maybe wearing a V-neck, basically, bro. Yeah, that's what it is. Very nice, like Borat vibes all day on this bad boy, okay? And uh, although I don't look like Borat, I'd imagine I smell like him whenever rocking this bad boy. Listen, there is a certain, look, who the hell would wanna smell like Borat? Let me take that back a little bit, but it smells like a million bucks, all right? So that's what it smells like. The actual notes that it says it has is at the top, fruity, and then it also says patchouli, rose in the mid, and in the base it says amber and powdery. Unfortunately. That's what we're going to be dealing with when talking about this brand, but I'll do my absolute best to give you guys uh, descriptors, relationships, etc. Like I said, this reminds me a lot of Arabian Night Silver, and um, you're absolutely going to get this hefty dose of pink pepper and patchouli. That's what it smells like. It smells like amber, patchouli, pink pepper. That's all I really get. To my nose, the rose is uh, kind of the back backbone of the fragrance as well. It's not necessarily something that's protruding and it smells more aromatic to my nose. It definitely smells like there might be something of geranium uh, because of this rosy nuance. So although it says rose, it's a more aromatic style rose. And generally speaking, that's going to be uh, what you get with geranium. So I wouldn't necessarily say there isn't, that, or this would be invalid to say rose, but I would say probably and likely to be geranium instead. And that's that signature Middle Eastern DNA. It's musk, amber patchouli, geranium, and maybe some citrus is at the top. If you like fragrances like Amiri, and more accurately, I would say Arabian Night Silver, you're gonna love this one. Amiri does smell more expensive and a little bit lighter and fresher than this, but it treads in that family, you guys. Beast mode stuff, beast mode stuff. You will go nose blind to this though, so be careful because I sprayed it on like eight times and I, was, I thought it was gone, but people were telling me the entire day, dude, you smell, wow, like I can smell you. So there you go, that's what I think about Namir. Absolutely worth the pickup at around like, I don't even know how much it is, but check the description. I'll put a bunch of links or I'll put a link if there is one available. Moving on to the next one, this is going to be the Sphinx's newest release and this actually smells really good. So per the website at the top, we've got notes of citrus, herbal, lemon, and then we've got bergamot and herbal notes. And in the mid we have floral, woody, lily of the valley, jasmine, rose, patchouli, guyac wood. And in the base, there's this ambery vanilla, a hefty dose of it. There's also caramel, tonka bean, amber, and musk. 
musk. And that's pretty true. I get a couple vibes of different fragrances. It's a little bit more of like an herbal style of, think of something like Altair meets uh, Le Mode Le Parfum. That's basically what this smells like. It's not necessarily as vanillic or as spicy. I don't really get any of that cinnamon from Altair. Rather, I get that same style ambery vanilla with herbs. It's different. And also those floral aspects that you're going to get floral and powdery aspects from Le Mole Le Parfum. Uh, and yeah, so that's basically what I get. A powdery, ambery styled of Ambroxan and vanilla. That's it. It actually smells really good. And I sprayed this on going to bed. I woke up and it was still there. So one of the uh, better newest releases for sure. I haven't really spoke a lot of their newest releases from Sphinx, but this one and Mango Licious Hibis Storm is actually really freaking good. If you like Altair, Le Mole, Le Parfum style DNAs, you're going to love this one, Cairo Nights. It smells amazing. Moving on to the next fragrance is another one that I picked up from Janate, and it's called Thaluge. And Thaluge just basically means like frost or uh, freezing or something of that nature, okay? Notes of this fragrance at the top include orange, mandarin orange, orange blossom, bergamot, lemon, and lime. And then in the mid, we've only got a bunch of floral notes and in the base there's sandalwood. What this basically reminds me of or smells like is a combination of very mass appealing uh, fragrances that are semi-generic. We're all used to these fragrances but it still smells like a million bucks. It smells amazing and uh, worthy of compliments as well although the performance is not really all that good. This smells like a mashup between something like both of these. It has certain floral aspects of this bad boy right here, Lacoste L1212, the Blanc, which is an amazing fragrance, and Versace Porome, which is both, they're both aromatic, they're both fresh, uh, this one being a little bit more aquatic, it does have some floral aspects, and they have, generally speaking, a makeup and a breakdown very similar to this one, Thaluge. Not necessarily a clone of either of these, and I don't really find any of their fragrances to be clones, genuinely. More so just giving you these references so you understand better uh, what it smells similar to. This brand's been around for a long time, just like many of these other Middle Eastern brands, but this smells like something in that family. It smells, uh, Amazing. I love this stuff. It doesn't necessarily have any Middle Eastern vibe or touch and what I'm talking about referencing is that signature musk. It's absolutely not here, but it does smell really good. The only problem with it is longevity is like five hours, but man, I sprayed this on. I showered in this bad boy and I loved every bit of it. But for the five hours, I could smell myself. So if you're looking for something quick, you know, easy, this is one to go with. And considering the fact, I think this you can find for like less than 50 bucks. Not sure, but I will be posting the links regardless. Moving on to the last one, this is called Thani. And Thani, if I'm not saying it wrong, means different or something else, basically. And the performance of this is something else. So let's start off with the notes of this fragrance at the top. There's going to be citrus and saffron. In the mid, we get sandal, cedarwood, and amber. And in the base, there's vetiver, leather, and patchouli. So through and through, you will definitely get this leather that shines from the top all the way to the dry down. However, it's done in a more fresh way. It's kind of like this office leather fragrance that you can wear literally every single day. It reminds me of other classical style fragrances that utilize the note of leather while doing it in a fresh way. Something you can wear to the office, something you can wear as a daily scent, something that smells very, very classic, but also modern at the same time. So although a leather dominant fragrance, it's still relatively aromatic and fresh spicy. I would say that this is an aromatic, fresh spicy leather fragrance. When talking about fragrances that do something very similar in accords, we're gonna be looking at fragrances like Platinum Ego East, and that's exactly the vein that I get placed in. Not necessarily as fresh, but you could still easily say that this is relatively fresher than most leather generic or leather centric fragrances, I should say rather. You can definitely sense that there is like this uh, barbershoppy classic vibe that may Maybe from like a combination of lavender, some geranium, maybe a little bit of rosemary that places me in that vein of fragrances. Although not really listed in the note breakdown, it could potentially be just an accord that I'm sniffing or the fact that it's there and they're just holding it back as known or as common with a lot of other fragrances. I will say though that I get everything else that's noted in the note breakdown as well. So it could potentially be that I'm getting some of those accords like that aromatic facet or the aromatic nature from a combination of like the saffron, the citruses, etc. But for the most part, it's still going to place you in that same vein. This is also extremely beastly stuff. It utilizes a lot of those woods, such as cedarwood, sandalwood, the amber, but also has that aromatic nature to help this one really pop off. I remember the first day that I was testing this fragrance, I sprayed it on one time on my arm and I was already rocking something else. And through everything else that I was rocking, which was at least 10 sprays, that one spray was the one that was projecting. I walked out of Sam's Club and this older lady uh, complimented me on what I was smelling 
mean, it made sense because it is more of a classic fragrance. Uh, she said, whatever you have on smells amazing. And I actually asked her, are you smelling this or are you smelling this? And she in fact said she was smelling this. So gentlemen, an absolutely beastly performing fragrance that uh, places me in a not necessarily barber shoppy. I really don't want to focus too much on barber shoppy, but it's kind of this aromatic, fresh, spicy leather fragrance that smells really good. You can wear this to the office. I wouldn't really atomize it more than about two, three times. You could dress this one up and not necessarily dress it down uh, beyond the office, I would say. The leather is pretty prominent, but everything else in here is shining as well. So I would not sign it off as just a leather fragrance. Honestly, you're getting a lot for what you're paying because generally speaking, this is under 120 bucks and the performance of this is absolutely nuclear stuff. So that's pretty much all I have to say about all four of these fragrances. I figured it would be some value to talk about these before we actually break them down into like top tens and full reviews, etc. This one isn't necessarily a full review, but for the most part, the findings will be relatively close, I think, for something like this because it just screams beastly stuff. Like, I mean, if it did that with one spray, what more is left? Thuluge, unfortunately, a little bit of a letdown with the performance, but I'll still be testing it just because of the fact. And Namir, also a great one. And one of the best new releases from Sphinx Fragrances is Cairo Night. I also have a coupon code to the house of Sphinx. You can use, I think it's Aromatics or Aromatics 15. Check the links down in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And while you're down there, leave a like, hit that subscribe button. Till the next one, peace.